on The View yesterday. I just want to play this for you. It's not exactly a lead headline, but uh, they were talking about all this yesterday. And, and uh, Jesus, you know, it's, it's one thing to defame libs of TikTok or me or Chris Ruffo or Donald Trump or, you know, one of the usual suspects. That's one thing. Um, of course, infinitely more outrageous and offensive is when they try to drag Jesus Christ into this, which is what they did on The View. Listen to this. They were in a place that accepts them for who they were, and someone came to that place. And that's and what's so the, sad. The part, and I don't know that they hide behind religion, because that, I said this on this show once before. Jesus would be the grand marshal at the pride parade. I don't mean I about really, gay really people. I mean that. in every argument we have. But here's we your weaponize religion. religion. Here's my religion, question. But it's wrong. Mm -hmm. If you're so afraid, why are you going over there? Yeah. It, if they scare you so much, leave them alone. When stuff scares me, I leave it alone. Mm -hmm. If I don't want to be bothered, I don't go there. See, that's the problem. You don't want to just have your feelings. You want everybody else to join you. And you know what? You can, you can scream, you can cuss, you can do all the things that you say. But you know what? Gay people are here. They're not going anywhere. There is nothing you can do. You know, you can yell and scream, but you know, as, as the Lord, as everybody was talking about, you know, made in God's image. Yep. Made in God's image. There are no but except for, there's none of that. No. Keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out where you stand as a human being, let alone a Christian. We'll be right back. What I really appreciate is that the one chick at the beginning starts by saying, um, and I, I honestly don't know any of their names except for Whoopi Goldberg and Joy. So I know those two. The other two I don't know. The other, however many it is. Um, the chick at the beginning says that they're weaponizing religion. They use religion. And then for the rest of the segment, all the other women on the panel do what she just accused conservatives of doing. They, they start using religion to weaponize it against their opponents. So they're like contradicting exactly what she just said. So the women over on The View were um, squawking this week about free speech, and I want to go through a couple of these clips. First of all, here's Whoopi Goldberg announcing, um, tragically, that she's leaving Twitter. It has been a little over a week since Elon Musk took over Twitter, and the place is a, it's a mess. He's already called back some of the workforce. He fired a few days ago. He's putting his $8 charge for blue check verification on hold. First it was going to be $20, now it's going to be $8. He also suspended Kathy Griffin for impersonating him on a parody account, uh. which has started a free Kathy hashtag to Trent. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I'm getting off. I'm yeah. getting off today because I just feel like you know, it's, it's so messy, yeah. and I, I, I'm tired of now having had certain kinds of attitudes blocked and now they're back on. Yeah. And I just, I'm gonna get out and if it settles down and I feel more comfortable, yeah. maybe I'll come back. But as of tonight, I'm done with Twitter. <laughs> of course, if you're like me, you hear that and you, you think, uh, uh, oh, you were on Twitter? I didn't even know that. Like, what are the, what are the, I, I, I just wanna know, in, if I can get in, get in their own head, get in their heads, which is not really a place I'd wanna be, but. Well, how do you think people are going to react to this? Do you think people are, you're making some big dramatic announcement. I'm done. You know, I might be back later, but I just, for now, I'm out of there. Which, by the way, when it comes to dramatic announcements, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's kind of an anticlimactic way to go about it. I'm done. I mean, I might come back later, but I'm done for now. I will not be on Twitter again until at least tomorrow morning if not a little bit sooner, but at, at this moment right now, I'm not going to be, I am not using Twitter at this moment while I'm on TV. But what do they expect? Do they think that people are going to, like, the, the people who think it's good that Elon Musk took over Twitter, are they going to say, well, never mind. I mean, if this scares uh, Whoopi Goldberg away, I, I can't imagine Twitter without Whoopi Goldberg. So The View, you know, if you, if you tune into The View, whoever makes the mistake of doing that, um, maybe, I, I don't know, I don't know what you're expecting when it comes to something like this. I don't know if you're expecting in real insight into, uh, into geopolitics from the ladies of The View. But if that's what you're looking for, you're going to be disappointed. 
Um, here is Joy Behar. What, what's what's her main you know concern? What what is she worried might happen if this um, if this conflict spreads and becomes a world war? Yeah, there's global warming, but as far as she's concerned, there's um, a consequence even more dire than that. Listen. Estimates are 50,000 Ukrainians will be dead or wounded, yeah. and that this is going to start a humanitarian crisis, a refugee crisis in Europe. We're talking yeah. about five million people yeah. that, that are going to be displaced. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's heartbreaking to hear what is going to happen. Yeah. Well, I'm scared of what's going to happen in, in Western Europe, too. Yeah. Ah. You know, you just, you plan a trip, you want to go there, I want to go to Italy for four years. I haven't been able to make it because of of uh, the pandemic. And now this, you know, it's, yeah. it's like, who's going to, what's going to happen there? And now this. First, there was a pandemic of 5 million people died and it stopped me from taking a, my, my Italy vacation that I've wanted to take. It's been my dream. And now we have war. What else? What else is going to happen to me as Joy Behar? All right, moving to this, Whoopi Goldberg is uh, shedding some some light, adding some insight to the Nancy Pelosi communion situation in San Francisco. Let's listen to that. Welcome to The View, y'all. The abortion rights battle is starting to blur the lines between church and state. The Archbishop of San Francisco mm, is calling for Speaker Nancy Pelosi to be denied receiving communion because of her pro-choice stance. He's one of the priests who also called for President Biden to be denied sacrament. This is not your job, dude. <laughs> that is not, you can't, that is not up to you to make that decision. You know, what is the saying? It's kind of amazing. Uh, but, you know, what is the point of communion, right? It's for uh, sinners. It's the, for, the, for sinners. It's the reward of saints, but the bread of sinners. How dare you? It's not your job, dude. No, uh, Whoopi, that is literally his job. That's actually what, what he is supposed to do as the uh, archbishop. Okay, now, and I, does, does Whoopi Goldberg identify herself as Catholic? I'm not actually sure about that. Whether she identifies herself that way or not, as is so often the case these days on the left with self-identification, it's, it's false. It doesn't mean anything. Because she clearly, whether she's Catholic or not, does not understand the basic hierarchical structure of the, uh, of, of the church. And by the way, there is no mixing of church and state here at all. Okay. In fact, if, if the archbishop had declined to enforce the rules for Nancy Pelosi because she's a high-ranking government official, that would be church and state. You know, it feels always kind of cheap and easy to use a segment from The View as fodder for the daily cancellation, and it is definitely cheap and easy, but sometimes it's okay to go the cheap and easy direction of life, I think. So we turn now to the screeching banshees of The View as they discuss Mike Pence and his views on marriage. During the Q&A of his most recent YAF speech, Pence uh, addressed his support for so-called traditional marriage, otherwise known simply as marriage, uh, but addressed it in a relatively sort of circumspect way. Let's watch that. If one of your children came out to you as gay, how would you respond? What would you tell them? I'd look him in the eye and tell him I love you. I believe marriage was ordained by God and instituted in the law, but we live in a pluralistic society. And the way we go forward and the way we come together as a country united, I believe, is when we respect your right to believe and my right to believe what we believe. Hmm. A political answer, mostly meaningless, but uh, I'm not going to harp on that. We, you know, we actually aren't going to come together as a country united simply by respecting each other's right to believe whatever we believe. I mean, we obviously all have the right to believe what we believe. You can't stop somebody from believing something. Even in like North Korea, you technically have the right to believe whatever you want to believe because no one can get inside your mind and stop you from believing anything. Um, but acknowledging that we all have the ability to believe whatever we want to believe is not itself the basis for any sort of meaningful national unity. And though I do acknowledge other people's right to believe whatever they believe, I certainly don't respect the beliefs themselves necessarily. True national unity could be forged through shared belief. Not shared acknowledgement of everybody's right to believe what they believe, but through actually sharing in the same fundamental values and beliefs. 
not that everyone's marching lockstep and believes all, all the exactly the same things on every single point, but having some basic fundamental values and beliefs in common. That's where you have unity. Because then you're uniting around that. You take that away, then you're, what are you uniting around? There's nothing there. Um, I don't share the beliefs of the other side in this country, and I also don't respect their beliefs, and I find their beliefs to be abhorrent, insane, and disgusting, so much so that I actually don't even respect them personally either. So that, that's the situation. In any case, this is all somewhat beside the point, I suppose. The heckling Herodans on the panel weren't discussing that issue exactly. Instead, they offered their insights about the marriage issue. And um, so we're going we're gonna to go through a, just a, a brief sampling of this. First up is the token fake conservative at the, ta- at the table, um, Alyssa Farah, who used to work for Pence. And um, here's what she says and some of the other women. I still advise a number of Republicans, um, and one issue that I have, to- or two issues I've told them, across the board, you will lose the younger generation, 35 and down, is if you do not come around on marriage equality and climate change. The country's mind is made up. I'm someone who believes you can believe what you want in your church. I'm Episcopalian. I have certain beliefs in my church, but it is the law of the land that you can marry who you love, and that is a good thing. Having the right to choose who you want to be and not being made to feel shame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm is what democracy is. Who decided that that a traditional marriage is a man and a woman? Who came up with this plan? Well, everything that exists in nature, right? People say it's unnatural, but isn't everything that exists in nature by definition is is natural. But is homosexuality even mentioned in the Bible? I don't think it is. I believe it it is. 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 You know, um, I I appreciate what you're saying about 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 your your former boss and and Mike Pence. I, I think he's lying on that tape. Um, And I I think that, you know, words are meaningless when your actions say differently, right? And um, let's just take a look very briefly at uh, Mike Pence's record with the LGBTQ uh, plus community. Um, In 2000, um, he uh, said during his congressional campaign that Congress should oppose any effort to put gay and lesbian relationships on an equal legal status with heterosexual marriage. Now, I have to check, so don't quote me on this, but I think that the clip you just watched actually now holds the record as, in fact, officially the dumbest 90 seconds in the history of television. Uh, There's a lot of competition for the title, but the sheer amount of dumb packed into such a short period of time creates an incredibly and perhaps historically and maybe fatally potent concentration of dumbness. So let's try to our best to kind of sort through it all, starting at the beginning. First, the pretend conservative says that she is still advising Republicans. Now, I wish I could just assume that she's lying about that, but unfortunately, I have no doubt that um, any number of Republicans would be foolish enough to take political advice from a talking head on The View. I mean, I could definitely see somebody like Adam Kinzinger, maybe Utah's Governor Spencer Cox, paying money to hear the sage wisdom of Joy Behar's TV sidekick. And the primary piece of wisdom she offers to these poor, dull-witted saps is that The best way to win the young generation is to give up defending marriage and the family and to become a climate change alarmist. She didn't say it there, but I can guarantee she would also advise that Republicans lay off the pro-life stuff, maybe start adopting some pro-CRT talking points, take a friendlier stance towards gender ideology, learn to love gun control. In fact, I'm positive on that last point because apparently during another segment on the show, she conceded that no one needs an AR-15, quote unquote. Um, Another concession to impress young people, I suppose. But the problem is that you aren't going to win the young over to your side or anyone over to your side by becoming a pale imitation of your opponents. Why would any young person go to the Republican Party to get their progressivism fix when they could just go to the Democrats and get the real stuff, pure grade, right from the source? What are they going to choose? Organic grass-fed leftism or watered-down prepackaged leftism with artificial flavoring? Next, we hear from the other woman who says that um, democracy is the right to choose who you want to be without feeling shame. No part of that is true or makes sense. You don't have the universal absolute right to choose who you want to be, whatever that even means. And you certainly don't have the right to not feel shame. Now, shame may be warranted or not. The person causing you to feel shame may be justified or not, depending on the circumstances. But whichever is the case, You can't claim from the universe the right to be free from shame or judgment or criticism. There's no government in the world that can protect you from those aspects of life, nor should the government try. Speaking of the government, none of this has anything to do with democracy. 
Democracy is a political system, which comes in various forms, direct democracy, representative democracy, and so on. But democracy is not the overarching catch-all term that people seem to want to turn it into. When somebody says democracy these days, what they really mean is stuff that I like. Whatever they like or want is democracy. Whatever they don't like or don't want is anti-democratic, which is totally nonsensical. Then to top it all off, she she claims that um, anything which can be found in nature is natural. Now, this is technically true as the word natural can be defined as existing in nature, but just because something exists in nature or can be found in nature, that in and of itself doesn't mean that it's good. Cancer is natural in that sense. It exists in nature. Cannibalism exists in nature. Murder. Uh, Non-consensual sex happens all over the animal kingdom. You're really walking down a precarious path when you try to morally justify something by pointing out that it occurs in nature. You need to offer more than that. After all, the whole reason the law exists is that we are naturally inclined to behave in immoral ways. If we weren't, then there'd be no need for any law at all. After that, Joy Behar says that homosexuality isn't in the Bible. And she's right about that. Of course, I mean, aside from 1 Corinthians 6, Leviticus 20, Romans uh, 126, 1 Timothy, Romans 127, numerous other passages. But aside from all that, it's not in there. Finally, the other dim bulb at the table gets a chance to chime in and begins by pointing out that Mike Pence opposed gay marriage in the year 2000. You know who else opposed gay marriage in the year 2000? Um, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, the entire Democratic Party, the vast majority of the country and nearly the entire world outside of this country. Like they all did too at that time. This is actually a significant point that she raises inadvertently. You know, because it, it does bring to mind the fact that just a couple of decades ago, nearly everyone everywhere believed that marriage was between a man and a woman. A decade and a half later, that view had become not only unpopular, but unspeakable. Another five years after that, and nobody even knows what a man or woman is anymore. Might this be evidence of, I don't know, a slippery slope? We're thinking about. But it's a thought process that may be beyond the capacities of the ladies of the view, because it is a thought process that involves, you know, thought. So instead, they just babble nonsensically. And that's why, as easy as it is to say, I will still say that today the view is canceled.